Hey everyone, Dr. Richard Lai here with Study Acupuncture With Me. Now, this episode is on the general manifestations of lung patterns. This is sort of a special episode because in a way, it's kind of like a preview of the lessons that you're going to get in the Foundations Board Exam prep course that I've been working on. And in this episode, I'll give you sort of a sneak peek at the lessons and the PowerPoints and the slides and the handouts that you're going to get in that course, which when I was going through a lot of these handouts and all these things that you're going to get in the course, it was kind of eye opening to me because like I wasn't really sure how to feel about all the work that I've done with this one. And it's kind of hard to explain. It's when I opened up the document from so long ago, from when I first started it. And I'll just show you, I'll, I'll put it on the screen so you can see. Um, and if you look at the timestamp, you can see I've been working on this prep course for actually quite some time, right? I literally started the first lesson in 2021. And I've been recording it on some video. And sometimes when I look at it and I don't like it, I re record it and I edit it. So, and I just go lesson by lesson, topic by topic. So, this course, if you count it as 2021, it's been basically four years in the making. And so, when I look at that, I immediately I start to criticize myself. And it's like, why? Why do I start to criticize myself? I'm not sure if you're like this, but I start to say, why is it taking you so long? What is taking you so long? And for those of you that have been listening and following Study Acupuncture with me this entire time, to you all, I feel like I really need to apologize because I have been working on this for so long and I, I've been working on it as hard as I can. And it's not an excuse, but just out of transparency, we all go through this. We're all juggling multiple things at the same time. I've been juggling building my family, trying to be present with them, trying to grow my physical therapy and acupuncture skills, but also juggling recording and editing the YouTube and the podcast episodes and Instagram posts and reels that came out you know, during, during that time. Everyone has to post reels now, not just posts anymore. And you know, of course, going to CEUs and getting better with physical therapy and manual therapy and learning more acupuncture protocols and just basically trying to be the best physical therapist and acupuncturist that I could be. But there really is just so much time in the day. And you can really, being a finite body in a finite time frame, you can only devote yourself to so many things at the same time, which is why I came to the realization that systems and habits are so important. If you have a system and you have habits that you stick to, especially while you're in school, while you're studying, you have rules for yourself. I review the lesson or I review the class notes every Friday so that that week I have a little bit of the knowledge in my head and I plant the seeds so that it can just grow from there. So when you're becoming an acupuncturist, it's really important. Even after you graduate, is really important too. After you pass all your board exams, your systems and your habits are all you can fall back on if you wanna be the best acupuncturist that you can be. So again, I apologize to all of you for how long this is taking, but I do promise you that I'm not giving up, that it's almost done. I'm trying not to let my perfectionism get in the way, but also time is such a valuable commodity these days, and I know that you can echo that sentiment. You know, for me, with two kids, Again, not an excuse. That's just me being transparent. Because for me, and I'm telling this to myself, not lecturing you or giving you hopefully unwarranted advice in any way, but for me, what I tell myself is, if I feel like I don't have enough time, that means I need to make time. So that means I look at my schedule, I look at my week, I look at my month, I look to see where there's pockets of time, and I make time. So that means what I've been doing is I've been waking up earlier. I wake up way before the kids and my wife wake up, and then I work on the things that I plan to work on. And having a plan when I wake up is really important because when I wake up in the morning, I'm tired. And so I need to prime my body for whatever I'm trying to do. So the same for you. When you are sitting down to do work, you have to plan out exactly what you're going to do. Because if you don't know exactly what you're going to do when you have the time to sit down, you're going to be wasting time when you're sitting there trying to figure it all out. And that's 
mental capacity and mental gas that you don't want to waste. So one way that you can make a plan and stick to it is to have a planner. You can have a daily planner, a weekly planner. I have something on my website that you can use. I also have a video that I'll link in the description of this episode so you can learn how to use that planner in the most efficient manner. So anyway, the point of this episode is to talk about lung patterns. Now, recently I posted up on social media a post that seemed to resonate with a lot of you, which is, that's awesome. That always makes me happy. And that was the mnemonic of bad cold. Now, this bad cold mnemonic, what is it? It's basically just a way for you to remember some of the main clinical manifestations of the lung patterns. So for example, I'll put on the screen here all the patterns of the lung. And the way I have it is it's broken up into the eight principles. So we have empty patterns like lung chi deficiency, lung yin deficiency, we have lung dry or lung dryness, whatever you wanna call it. And then we have full patterns that are exterior in origin, and that's patterns like invasion of the lungs by wind cold, invasion of the lungs by wind heat, and invasion of the lungs by wind water. And then we also have full patterns of an interior origin, and then we also have combined patterns here in the bottom right. And when you're in acupuncture school, you need to memorize everything about these patterns. The clinical manifestations, the tongue and pulse, the causes, the treatment principle, and even the acupuncture points that have to do with each of these patterns. Now that can be overwhelming, especially when you don't have any sort of idea of how to tackle the actual topic of itself. So when I do come out with a course, it's actually a really good idea for you to have the course while you're in the beginning stages of your acupuncture schooling because it would actually be a great adjunct to your learning. Basically, the perfect scenario would be that you have your class, you have your school, you take notes, you take notes from the teacher, you have this wonderful long class period that you can actually review the material without rushing through all of it for the quiz or for the exam. And the teacher has enough time to be able to actually review it so that you can retain it and understand it. And they're not just trying to cram as much material as possible uh, in a short amount of time so that they can get it all done before the quiz or before the exam. That is a perfect scenario. But in reality, a lot of times, it's not like that, right? There's so much material. There's only so many credit hours in each semester or trimester. And a lot of times students have a hard time with that because you're not only juggling school, you're juggling a thousand different things. And you feel like acupuncture is literally a different language that you're trying to learn instead of just like a medicine that you're trying to learn. So what would be great is if you get my course and when you review lung patterns in school, you also pull up the lung organ theory patterns lesson and you basically get your own personal tutor and you can review at your leisure. You can download the study materials. You can go back and listen to the lessons over and over and over again until you really get the actual topic. And then at school, you pass your quizzes, you pass your midterms, you pass your finals. And when it comes time for your board exam, you refresh yourself. You pull the lesson back up as a refresher and bam, you pass the boards easily as well. So that would be an ideal scenario. And that's actually my goal for you to have that kind of experience during your schooling. So as I'm finishing the course up, that's my intention. So for you, make sure that you sign up for my email list so that way you know exactly when that course is gonna come out. All right, so now with the lung patterns, the mnemonic is bad cold. Now, B, B stands for breathlessness. This comes from our first empty pattern, which is lung chi deficiency. Now, A in bad cold, that one stands for asthma. And the reason I say asthma, because when you look at the clinical manifestations, there's dry cough, weak, hoarse voice, dry mouth, dry throat. And it's hard to put all that into like a quick mnemonic. The only thing I could think of was asthma. But now that I've had some time to think about it, I feel like the better choice for the A would actually be like an airway issue or airway dryness. Because so, when you look at the lung yin deficiency manifestations, you have dry cough. So airway dryness makes sense. You have weak, hoarse voice. So that's sort of like the airway issues. And then you have dry mouth, dry throat. So that's the airway dryness. And why there's all this dryness in lung yin deficiency is because it's yin deficiency. And yin includes our body fluids. So that's why you see all of those dry manifestations. So A would probably be better to stand for airway issues or airway dryness. Just think lung yin deficiency. Now the next letter is D. D is dryness, and there's actually a pattern called lung dryness. And you have all of those 
dry manifestations there. So you have the tongue even is dry. You have the cough that is dry. You have the skin that is dry. You have dry throat, dry mouth, and dry tongue. And that's all with the pattern of lung dryness. Now, the next letter in bad cold is C. Now, C has to do with cough and cold. And this actually comes from the full patterns section, which they're, these are the ones that are of an exterior origin. Basically, there's invasion of the lungs by different EPFs, like wind cold, wind heat, and wind water. And with wind cold and with wind heat, you're going to get these exterior manifestations like aversion to cold. So the C there is for the cold. You'll also get cough. So it's cough and cold. So the C stands for cough. The C stands for cold, like in these exterior invasion full patterns. The next letter in this mnemonic of bad cold is O. Now, O, this has to do with how Machiocha spells edema. So if you flip into your Machiocha book, it's spelled O-E-D-E-M-A. And that's because the O-dema or O-E-D-E-M-A is actually coming from British English. And for the most part, a lot of people just spell edema with E-D-E-M-A, but uh, that's besides the point. Now, for this pattern, this is actually having to do with the invasion of the lungs by wind water. And in this pattern, there's a lot of edema, uh, more specifically, actually facial edema. So facial edema happens with invasion of the lung by wind water. Now, why does this happen? Well, our lung has this function, which is to regulate the water passages. Another function of our lung is that it has a function where it descends and it disperses. So when there's this invasion of the pathogenic factor, the exterior pathogenic factor, in this pattern, what happens is wind invades, cold invades, also damp invades as well. And this actually impacts our lungs functions to regulate the water passages, to also descend and disperse. So if the water passages aren't regulated well, if the fluids aren't descending and dispersing, they aren't descending and dispersing, where are they going to go then? They are going to pool in the face or above rather than pooling at the bottom of the body like how edema usually does. So we'll have facial edema. That facial edema is a fluid buildup in the face, which is one of the key manifestations of an invasion of the lung by wind water. All right, now the next letter in our mnemonic is L. L stands for loud barking cough. And this comes from one of the full patterns of an interior origin. This one is the pattern of phlegm heat in the lungs. Now there it says that the main clinical manifestation is barking cough. Now this barking cough has a profuse, sticky, yellow, or green sputum, which is another characteristic to let you know that there's heat involved when there's that yellow or that green color there. But the main clinical manifestation is the barking cough. So that's why I say L for loud barking cough. Now the last letter in our mnemonic of bad cold is D. Now, this D stands for damp phlegm. And we have a couple patterns in the interior full patterns list, which have to do with a lot of different kinds of phlegm, which with these, they will all present differently. So for example, there's the pattern of cold phlegm in the lungs. The phlegm in cold phlegm in the lungs is going to be more of a white watery sputum. And then there's also a pattern called damp phlegm in the lung pattern. This is going to be phlegm that's a little more sticky, still white, and it's actually going to be easy to expectorate or easy to cough out. And then there's dry phlegm pattern. And this is a pattern where that phlegm is dry. So it's going to be a little more difficult to expectorate or it's going to be a little more difficult to cough out. All right. So there you go. That's a breakdown of the mnemonic of bad cold for lung patterns which I hope that that mnemonic helps you. And I hope that this video where we break it down a little bit more helps you as well. And I hope that it helps you remember some of the main clinical manifestations of the lung patterns according to organ theory. So that way, when you, you know, encounter an exam question like that or a quiz question like that, and or even in your clinic, someone comes in with a loud barking cough or you see it on an exam question, loud barking cough or barking cough with a, a sticky yellow or sticky green sputum. You're going to remember, oh, L, loud barking cough. This has to do with one of the lung patterns, specifically phlegm heat in the lung. All right. So I hope this episode helps you understand acupuncture a little bit more. I hope that it helps you feel more confident in the topics. 
And if it does, please make sure that you share this episode with a friend so that they can benefit as well. And make sure, again, that you sign up for my email list. You can sign up on my website, which is www.studyaccuwithme.com. This way you never miss an episode and you'll get some updates as to when my course comes out. All right, everyone. Until next time, God bless and happy studying.